Hello and welcome to LFC Focus. It is post-match reaction show time after Liverpool have just lost 2-1 at Molyneux to be dumped out of the FA Cup at the very first hurdle in the third round by a Wolves side that was pretty decent. But let's be honest, the one thing that we are all going to take away from tonight was that Liverpool were absolutely shocking. I mean, there wasn't really any player that can come out of that and say their performance was anything maybe a 7 out of 10 or more. It was just awful in terms of the individual performances. Awful in terms of how they tried to come together as a team. I was going to say gelled as a unit, but the problem today was that they just didn't. I mean, one thing that was just baffling me all the way through the game was the fact there never seemed to be a set formation. The players never seemed to know where they were actually meant to be positioning themselves on the pitch. You know, when the lineup got announced, we thought, oh, that's a bit interesting. Maybe it's a 4-4-2 with Sturridge and Origi as a strike partnership. Maybe 4-3-3 with Jones and Cater as midfielders bombing forward. Or maybe it's just a 4-2-3-1 that we've seen an awful lot. But I honestly could not tell you the formation that Jurgen Klopp went out to play that game with. I couldn't even probably get it right within three or four guesses. I have not got a clue how we were meant to be approaching that game, what the tactical setup was, who was meant to be playing where. You know, the Camacho and Moreno were meant to be fullbacks. We expected them to be fullbacks. They didn't really play like fullbacks at any point during the whole game. Both of them played like wingbacks or even full on wingers with the amount that they got forward. They barely spent any time in their half whatsoever, which is sometimes fine, but when you're offering absolutely nothing going forward, there's no point bombing forward and you know leaving your fellow defenders with so much work to do. And that is essentially what they did all the way through the game. You know, the, the midfielders, I didn't know who was the defensive one, who was meant to be linking up with the strikers, who was meant to be going box to box. You know, every single one of them popped up at centre back at times and every single one of them popped up at centre forward at times there didn't really seem to be any communication or understanding between them and you know don't even get me started on the strikers because they both played a lot of positions tonight neither of them ever played anything that remotely resembled a striker playing in either you know a false nine or a proper number nine or a strike partnership neither Origi nor Sturridge ever really showed up in the right positions for that game it was just a shambolic performance, you know. It just didn't look like a team of players who'd ever played alongside each other before. And I say that full well in aware awareness of the irony because I know that that's a team that has never played together before. I know that it's a side that was put together just for this game and will probably never be fielded in anything even closely resembling that lineup and formation, if you want to call it that, ever again. But they are still professional footballers. They're still professional footballers. The Liverpool Football Club. And they still play in the kind of formations they were probably meant to play in during training. They've probably had plenty of time with Jurgen Klopp going over it. You know, I said earlier, I can't tell you what formation Jurgen Klopp played. I'm sure he came up with one before the game. It's just as soon as those players got out on the pitch, they essentially abandoned it completely. So I'm going to go through every player individually because I think with a performance that bad... But with so many players on the fringes, it's always interesting to talk about the performances of every single player because I don't think anyone came out of that game without a talking point to their name, without something you can say about the way they played. So starting off with the goalie, Simon Mignolet, there are obviously people slating him for the goal he concedes from Ruben Neves, people saying he should move quicker, his positioning isn't that good. To be fair to him, it's a hell of a strike from Ruben Neves. You know, he absolutely wallops that from range. It's got dip, it's got curve, it only just sneaks inside that near post. And yeah, you shouldn't really be getting beaten from your near post, especially from that range. And you should know that a player like Ruben Neves is going to shoot. So I don't quite understand why he reacts so late. But also on the flip side, there's a lot of bodies in the way. You don't want to react early in case there is a deflection on it or something like that. So I'll be honest, I don't really know whether to criticise him for it or not. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say, yeah, you know what, fine. I'm not going to blame you for that goal. But all in all, not an amazing performance from Sai. You know, the first goal, he can probably do better, make himself bigger or come out quicker or do anything apart from just be totally indecisive on absolutely every front. So if I'm going to give a rating, 6 out of 10 for Simon Mignolet. Um, the centre-backs, Fabinho, you know, did all right considering the situation he's been thrust into, especially given that the bloke next to him, who was the recognised centre-back, was forced off after six minutes or something like that. I thought he got through the game reasonably well. Obviously, it's annoying to see him there because we know he offers so much more to the side in central midfield. So hopefully this isn't a long-term thing. Hopefully that Lovren injury isn't going to last for ages because if it is and he is forced to play at centre-back, 
that is a problem because we need Fabinho in central midfield. But I thought he did okay, you know, not really to blame for either of the goals. So you can't really have a go at him. So I'll probably give him a six or a seven out of 10, something like that. I would say seven on a normal day, but when you've lost in that kind of manner, it's hard to really give anyone a positive mark. But if we are going to be positive about someone, Kiana Huerba, to be honest, pretty solid all the way through the game. And I don't buy into what people are saying where they say he didn't put a foot wrong because there were times where he would dawdle on the ball a little bit. He wouldn't make the right decision. His passes wouldn't come off. He'd be a little bit too ambitious. But what I think is to his credit is the fact that he all those things happened and his head didn't go. For a 16-year-old to not play a perfect game and still you know, play well, still do what is expected of him and still show his positive attributes like he did tonight is incredibly, incredibly impressive. You know, the composure that he showed right the way through the game and that little jinky run he makes where he picks up the cross and then just goes for it goes past someone plays a pass to Shakiri. that deserved a goal at the end that deserved us to be all talking about how good this kid is you know obviously 16 years old one game to his name let's not get carried away but very very positive signs there under the circumstances that he was of course unexpectedly thrust into play center back against a pretty good Wolves side so again if I'm giving ratings let's give the kid a 7 out of 10 because he wasn't half bad so positivity out of the way time to talk about the players that I thought were really quite bad today Alberto Moreno probably a 5 out of 10 um, just offered nothing defensively always out of position and the problem is what I said earlier on the video if you're going to be that far forward all the way through the game do something with it, get crosses in, contribute to the attack, make something happen. Don't just dawdle a lot the wrong side of the halfway line, not contributing anything at that end of the pitch and selling your teammates down the river on the defensive side of things. So yeah, five out of 10, maybe even a four for Moreno. Basically rinse and repeat, control cut and control paste or whatever for the performance from Rafa Camacho. You know, at times I forgot he was on the pitch, which is a shame because he had a good preseason. And in preseason, one thing he did show was that he was good going forward. He was good getting to the byline and whipping balls in. And again, like Moreno, that's just something we didn't see at all tonight. So another player probably deserves a four or five out of 10 because again, offered nothing defensively. And especially when you're on the same side as Kiana Huerva, help the guy out. I know you're young as well, Rafa Camacho, but this kid's 16 years old. This kid wasn't expecting to start the game. Give him a hand. You know, he was being put under so much pressure by Rafa Camacho. And I get that Camacho's a youngster as well. But he is a defender at the end of the day in the position he's playing. I know that he's meant to be a right winger or a central attacking mid. That's the position he plays for the youth teams and stuff like that. But he's playing as a right back tonight. And he didn't show that at all. So a dis disappointing performance from Rafa Camacho, really. Onto the midfield, the most deep lying of them all was James Milner. I reckon that was one of James Milner's poorest performances in a Liverpool shirt. And part of me doesn't want to blame him because we know that he can't play the number six role. You know, he is a very versatile footballer. But if there's one thing he can't do, it's play defensive midfield because he makes too many mistakes in that position. He overcomplicates things. He's... He for a player who is such a good professional, he really does lack discipline in that position and it showed tonight with the first goal because he dawdles on the ball for far too long. He lets it go and then he just basically messes up his attempt to close. I think, you know, there's Jimenez there. He goes with Jossa because he thinks he's trying to force Jimenez wide. Jimenez obviously finishes the goal very well, but, you know, an early mistake from him that he finds it impossible to recover from that ends up leading to the goal. So I'd probably give him a 5 out of 10. I just thought in general as well, he never quite seemed to be up to the pace of the game. And I don't want to make reactionary statements because they're always the kind of thing that make you look silly after a few weeks. And I've done plenty of them in the past on this channel. But I do wonder about the future of James Milner because I don't think it's just tonight that it hasn't quite been working out for him. You know, there's other games this season that I look back on and think maybe the magic is sort of going. And sometimes he's played brilliantly. Sometimes he's been the James Milner we know and love and we know can still play for Liverpool and is such an important asset for us. But I think those performances are starting but to become more scarce and the performances where he looks out of his depth, where he looks slightly off the tempo of the game are becoming worryingly a little bit more common. So a poor night for James Milner, but he also was essentially trying to compensate for the fact that behind him was a 16-year-old kid at centre-back and the right-back wasn't helping out at all. You know, the amount of times it looked like he was playing in a back three or even playing as one of the centre-back pairing, I lost count of that tonight. So, you know, I don't want to criticise him because I think he tried 
not his best, but he did all right under the circumstances, but still a poor performance from Jimmy Milner. Uh, other midfielders, Naby Keita, just six out of ten, maybe even a five, just because, you know, for, for what we know Naby Keita can do, and given the circumstances of the evening where he needed to be the creative outlet, he needed to be the player who was the spark to make things happen, he just never really got going. He never really got the team going. There were times, there were a couple of moments where he'd get the ball in a tight area and suddenly he'd come alive and you think, okay, this is where we start to see the cater we know can perform for this Liverpool side. And then he would just fall by the wayside again. So a really disappointing performance from Naby Keita on two fronts, really, because we want to see good performances from him because we haven't really seen enough of Naby Keita over the first half of the season, but also because he needed to be an important player for Liverpool tonight. We needed his creativity. We needed that special something he can bring. And he just didn't offer it at all tonight. Uh, up next, Curtis Jones. Probably a 5 or 6 out of 10. A player that I don't really want to mark harshly because obviously he's an incredibly talented youngster. We know that. He's very young. He's getting his first start. It's always going to be difficult, especially because, and I'll say this now, and it applies to any judgment I make on the match, that was a good wall side. And on paper... Liverpool's second string, which is essentially what they put out with even, you know, some players who don't even make the second string because of the injuries like Kiana Huerva or Fabinho at centre-back and stuff like that. Liverpool's second string they put out tonight is about as good as Wolves' first team that they put out. So there's not a really, there's no massive shame in losing to that Wolves side, but it is the way that it happens. So I don't want to criticise Curtis Jones too much because if he put in that performance and it had been against Plymouth or Aldershot or something ridiculous like that, then really you would have expected more from him because we've seen more from him in pre-season playing against those kind of sides. But tonight he was playing against Premier League opposition, playing against really good Premier League opposition, playing against Premier League opposition that is built to win these type of games. So I don't want to be too harsh on him because of that. Shakiri, 6 out of 10, maybe 7 at a push, you know, really came alive in the latter stages of the game, which I think is simply because he really thrives when he's got decent players in front of him, when he's got players making the right kind of runs. He didn't have that earlier on with the attack being as bad as it was. Once Salah and Firmino came on, he had an outlet. He's had something to offer something to. But even before they came on, he was probably one of our better players because that little lob pass that he does was just so good in trying to stretch the play and stopping us from stagnating. Whenever it happened, we suddenly almost entered a new phase of play and stopped being in the kind of boring, repetitive lull that we ended up constantly getting stuck in. So I admired his effort. I admired the fact that he was trying to make something happen. But too many times today, he wasn't getting anything from the other players that he was trying to get something out of. And of course, he definitely deserves a goal for that free kick. It is a tragedy that that doesn't go in because it would have been absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, for the free kick alone, 7 out of 10 for Jordan Shakiri, And then the strikers. Yeah, they were they were pretty bad. I'll start with Divock Origi, 5 out of 10, you know, not great at any point, but does score a pretty decent goal under the circumstances and stays on the pitch for the full 90 and occasionally gets the ball, so a 5 out of 10. But I mean, he was a real symptom of the total lack of formation because he just showed up absolutely anywhere apart from where he needed to be for vast portions of the game. And obviously, I watched it on telly, so maybe at times he was in the box and he was just getting no service whatsoever. But from what I saw, it was a poor performance from Divock Origi. And then Daniel Sturridge, 3 out of 10. I mean almost a 2 because he's a good footballer and it feels ridiculous to give marks that low. But what did he even do tonight? What did, Can you remember Daniel Sturridge getting on the ball? Can you remember Daniel Sturridge playing a pass, having a shot, making a dribble? I really can't remember him even being on the pitch. If it wasn't for the fact that I had that team sheet as empirical proof that Daniel Sturridge started the game... I would seriously question whether he played any role in that match whatsoever because he just wasn't involved. And I said Divock Origi was a symptom of the, the lack of formation. Daniel Sturridge was even worse because the only times I saw him appear was in positions like, I don't know, central defensive mid or right wing or something like that, which is not ever where Daniel Sturridge should be supposed to play. I know that his role at the club has changed a little bit and he's embracing this kind of creative position that he's taken up, but he should be playing as a number 10. He should be behind the striker, just outside the box, and he wasn't doing that tonight. And, you know, it, that, that was the main problem tonight, was not that the youngsters didn't deliver, 
but the fact that when you do play that many young players, when you play that many players who are making their debuts, who haven't played more than 90 minutes for Liverpool in the past and stuff like that, the players who are senior pros, who have been there and done it before, have got to step up. Daniel Sturridge has got to step up and try and get goals and help out Curtis Jones on that left-hand side. James Milner, I get that he tried, but he's got to do a little bit more to help out Kiana Huerva and Rafael Camacho, despite just playing in their positions for them. The sensible thing to do would be to actually get in their ears and tell them to get back and say, just give me the ball and I'll do the things you're trying to do, because he's the seasoned professional and they are the young players. So... It was a poor night for Liverpool, all things considered. You know, it was a really, really shoddy performance. Absolutely nothing came together. Some of that can be down to the team sheet, but I really do think there's a lot of senior pros who've got to look at themselves after that game and be a little bit ashamed because they did not help themselves and they did not help the youngsters that were out on the pitch tonight. And also, you know, it's disappointing to go out because no matter how much you care about the FA Cup, we all liked what we saw from Kiana Huerva tonight. We all want to see more from Curtis Jones and even Rafa Camacho as well. And we're probably not going to now because they're not going to get opportunities in the Premier League because the title challenge is so important. They're obviously not going to get opportunities in the Champions League because the opposition is too good. So they've essentially now got to wait another year before they can get any other football for the first team. And that's what makes it really, really disappointing to go out of the FA Cup. And of course, you know, silverware is silverware at the end of the day. Games are games. I love to see Liverpool play football matches. I love to see us on week in, week out, weekend, midweek. So when we get kicked out of the co any competition, it's always a little bit annoying. But hopefully, you know, we can use the time to our advantage, the time that we've got off. We can allow players to recuperate. We can get ourselves into a situation where we never have to rotate to the degree, degree we had to tonight. And hopefully bounce back and get that win against Brighton. But yeah, a really shocking performance in Liverpool tonight. And I really hope we see nothing like it ever again, or certainly at least between now and the end of the season. So that is all for today's video. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, this little rant, hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button there if you're new around here. Check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel over the past few days as well. Don't forget to follow at LFC Focus TV on Twitter. And I'll be back soon with the pre-match content for that game against Brighton. Until then... Bye for now.